Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about and breaking down what makes this painting by Frank Frazetta so great. So we're going to be talking about a lot of the art principles that you hear in high school and college and stuff that they don't actually go into, how to use them, etc. And we're going to be really just discovering why this is considered one of the best paintings of all time. So let's get right into it. The first art principle that we're going to be looking at is the idea of line. And you're going to see that across all of these principles, there's a reoccurring theme here. So the reoccurring theme usually is leading the eye to the subject, and it's making the point, right? So when you're teaching little kids bedtime stories or whatever, you're always going to ask them at the end of the, at the end of the session, what was the moral of the story? And with painting, with speaking, with music, with whatever, whenever you have human communication, there's always a point. So you'll see across all of these different art principles that we're going to go into that it's always trying to bleed the eye to the point, which is this woman right here. So with line, for example, you'll see that a lot of lines in this composition are extremely linear and straight. And even the ones that aren't linear and straight are extremely geometrical. So what do I mean by that? I mean, <clears throat> if you take the angle, let's say, of these stairs, straight, 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 they're all perpendicular, right? Even that, this is circular, but it's still straight, straight. And you have all these straight lines in this composition. Even this cloth, which should feel more organic, feels awfully geometrical. And then you'll also see that this architectural arch right here, that's also, even though it's not a straight, it seems very geometrical. It seems very methodical, as if somebody planned it out and they built it, right? And all of that contrasts with three figures in this composition which are really the most important elements. Obviously her, and then this down here, and this guy, right? So the lines you'll see here for this woman, they're not as linear and straight or like consistently curvy as the other ones. You can see that if we break it down right here, your eye generally goes towards that area. And the reason for that is that you're always looking for difference in your compositions. And this is really a fundamental concept that you have to get and even once you understand it and you try to apply it to your art it, it's still going to be a few years before you can really master it but the idea of difference and how to lead the eye to the subject is one of the ways that Frazetta was one of the greatest painters of all time and you can see in that in this line drawing you have all these straights right here and you have this curve but it all feels again very man-made and then if you look at this woman the lines are extremely irregular they're not as planned out. They don't feel as man-made. So because he did that, you instantly look at the subject. And when you, when the point is clear, the composition is more beautiful across the board. If you look at, if you go to a museum, the paintings that are going to captivate you the most, that are really going to stop you right in your tracks and make you, you know, wonder about human existence or whatever art, however it speaks to you. But the ones that always do it are always the simplest. And this composition is insanely simple, and that makes it really, really sophisticated, kind of, you know, counterintuitively. So another thing that Frank Frazetta is using here in this particular composition is a value arrangement, which really, really works. Now, the reason why it works is, again, because it's simple. If you squint your eyes, and this is already a simplified version, but if you squint your eyes further, there's two big shapes here. You have the dark, and then you have the light right? This is the light section, and then this is the dark section. And when you simplify it down to two values for your entire composition, and I know that there, there's subtleties and there's, you know, there's edges and there's a lot of subtleties in here, right? But the major values are all categorized into two different spots. When you do that, it becomes a lot simpler, what you're trying to say. It feels less bouncy all over the place. If you had made exaggerated this light, for example, and you made the as bright as her um, crown or whatever this Egyptian thing is, then your eye would be distracted and you would have a fight between two subjects. And as soon as you have two subjects that are brawling it out for your attention, immediately, almost instantaneously, it loses a lot of emotional resonance. So Frank Frazetta is using his, his values almost perfectly here, right? And another thing too, is that you can look at all these concepts, right? But if you take them all to the highest extreme, then they'll also feel a little bit dead. So if Frank had distilled it down into this this wonderful um, value distribution right here, 
and he hadn't included any lights in the darks, then it would feel a little too empty. And what's interesting about bringing the subject across is that the peripheral elements really complement the subject and they bring out its best light. You can see that in every single principle. The light is only as light as the dark is dark, for example. The green is only as green as the red is red. All those kind of differences bring your eye to the subject and they all complement it, right? But if this is way, way too simple and he hadn't even included this figure and it was all just like a black vignette like this, it would have lost a little bit of the original taste that it had in the painting. Now, if you go to the other extreme, obviously it's going to be negative as well. But you really want to think about simplifying it to this extent and then just just very, very conservatively throwing in a few values, you know, little light right there, tiny bit of light right there, so that your eye can do a little bit of wandering around the composition and it can get the idea of the context that the subject is actually in. But these are not so light that it actually compromises the real subject here. So that's another thing that makes this painting so great. Another thing that Frank Frazetta is just absolutely known for, one of his his biggest call to fame was the way that he would design shapes. And he got this mainly from Bridgman in studying constructive anatomy, where Bridgman would, instead of drawing an arm with all the muscles in like an anatomy book, he would just simplify it into like three shapes. I have four shapes for the... Right? So you'd simplify it down to that. And then obviously you'd add a little bit more complexity to that, you shade it and stuff. But the general simplification of the arm, all of the muscles in there, down to four shapes, that's what Bridgman was amazing at. And Frank Frazetta studied Bridgman a lot. You can see a lot of his interviews that he was quoted as studying Bridgman, and that comes out thoroughly in his work. The idea of wedging, the idea of simplification, all this other stuff, where you're omitting all the superfluous detail and you're not getting caught up in you know all, all the specific muscle fibers or the striations on the chest or, you know, it doesn't matter. What really matters is the large shapes right here. So I did this little shape study and you can see, I knocked this out in like two seconds. You know, it's not perfect, of course, but it gets the essence of what he was trying to say. If you took a picture of somebody, let's say a bodybuilder or something, and they were like really flexed and you could see all the grain in the picture and there was all this detail in there, it would really obscure the point and it'd be a lot more difficult to draw. And if it's more difficult to draw, and you'll find this almost across the board, if it's more difficult to draw, it's usually less aesthetic at the end of the day. The best paintings in the world are extremely simple. And it's the same with this one. Like this would be extremely easy to copy. Extremely easy. And all you have to do is just copy the shapes down that have been so carefully designed. And when you're thinking about design, you want to think about simplification, your subject, and then also what just feels right as a general rule. So for example, let's take all those ideas into principle. Here's what Frank was doing consciously, most likely, but it, perhaps it, there's probably an unconscious element to it if he was guided by his own feelings. So if we have a mini composition right here, and we say that this is our subject, if we grab, if we have a shape in that subject, and we do that, then instantly, you're kind of brought to the subject, right? And that's because normal shape design, when you taper, it has a push to it. And it's not, you don't want to make it too forceful because when it's too forceful, it's ugly. You know, beauty is never forced. It's just, it's just, it feels like it's there by happenstance. You know, it feels as if this was just, it just happened. It wasn't forced, it wasn't contrived. And the way that Frank did that was that he designed his shapes in a really subtle way that just gently brought you up to the composition. This isn't yelling at you to say, you know, to look over at her. It's just gently guiding the viewer. And that's really what you want to do in your own compositions as well. So we can see that he's using this tapering effect to the subject. Now, another thing that he's doing is that if he had made this, and I'm sure this cloth, I don't know, I, he said that he never used references. And so let's just take that at face value. Let's say he didn't use a reference for this cloth, but he could have made it a lot more complicated and it would have obscured the subject. So let's do another thumbnail right here. If this is our subject right here, again, same positioning, and we have that same general triangle shape, but it's it's overcomplicated, then instantly your eye is just brought to here. And that's a really negative thing you don't want to get in that situation. Because instead of focusing on the beauty and you know all the thought and energy that went into the subject that artists usually put into the subject, 
you're brought out of the composition and you're just staring at this extremely ugly shape. And that's not attractive to the eye. That's not going to bring you to the subject. It's just all out terrible. So what you want to do is you want to simplify it. And, you know, like I said before, Frazetta was amazing at this. I mean, that leg is just so simple. You know, and he added little subtleties like, you know, that was a little curvier, for example, or whatever. But to have an entire thigh that simple, that takes a lot of knowledge and understanding and a lot of practice. But once you get there and you start designing compositions like at this level, you're going to be creating really, really powerful art. And I think that should be the goal of every artist is to study all the old masters, really understand what they did well. And then if you understand it at a really instinctual level, and you practice it a lot, you'll see it just effortlessly showing up in your own art. But to think that these people were gods, that it's unattainable, that it was all talent, I think that's a very destructive mentality to have. There is a talent aspect to art, of course. There's certain aptitude in young children that other children don't have, for example. But to believe that that's a, that's a block and that you're never going to be able to overcome that, that's absurd. There's people who have had no talent whatsoever and they've grow to become amazing artists so i hope this all helped you to understand why this this is just such a beautiful painting i love frisetta's work it's extremely designed it's beautiful i i never get bored when i'm looking at it you, you can just stare at it for hours and the reason for that is because he's really literally thinking about all of these art principles and he's bringing it in such a sophisticated and simple manner so anyways i hope you guys have a great day i'll see you later